up. Uh, it's a story in there about this guy AD who put me on the on the bench next to the water cooler. Mm-hmm. Like I just got destroyed all over the field. I wasn't used to the conditioning that we were doing. Um, I wasn't used to all the weights we were lifting. I, I was just destroying my body, really. Mm-hmm. Um, but I really what I found out is I was building my mind. So it felt like I was getting beaten down, but I was building the resiliency to continue to show back up and take the beating until I was able to withstand it. Yeah, I was, uh, you kind of, you know, jumped the gun from me. I was going <laughs> to ask you about that AD experience, you know, where you were, I guess, lining up, you know, with him. And yeah. he was a receiver, and I guess you were the DB, right? No, nah, he was a DB, and I was a receiver. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You were the receiver. And um, I guess t- t- talk to us about that moment. <laughs> like be- the reason why this is significant to me is because I- I'll let you go and explain. Uh, yeah, yeah. So the AD story, and it's it's one of my favorites um, because people always talk about wannabes, and I realize I am. I'm a wannabe, and I I felt like I felt like you ha- in order to be, you have to want to be. Mm-hmm. So. I wanted to be the best. And to be the best, you got to beat the best. And AD was probably the number two corner in the state of Georgia. Mm-hmm. Eric Berry was in the same class because I never I never put him over a- EB. I was just but, talking about him the other day. Yeah. Eric Berry, yeah. But I'll, uh, AD was number two. And I, I called him out. I was like, hey, AD, I want you. I want you, AD. And he up there like, this little kick. Because I'm the kicker. <laughs> this little kicker, man. All right. And he came up and lined up. What grade is this? This is 11th grade. 11th grade, okay. Yeah. So he came over, lined up. They hiked the ball, and it felt like Floyd Mayweather was tagging me. Mm. I mean, he just hit my shoulder, my chest, my head, everything. And then he grabbed, he latched on and just drove me to the sideline. And as if in a movie, it's a water cooler right here on the bench. He sat me down on the bench next to the water cooler. Water cooler. And in my head, thinking back on it, it was like he was like, you, you look thirsty, little fella. Chill out. Mm-hmm. But in my mind, at 16 years old, I was like, nah, I want some more. I can't I can't go out like this. And, of course, I'm the kid that's like, no, let me go again. Let me go again. Let me go again. But I was called. I was like, I want you again. I don't want the next guy. I want you. I want to be back with the top guy, the first guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and we went again. And this time he didn't put me next to the water cooler. But he did put his paws on me again. And I didn't have any success on that day at all. And I walked back to the back of the line, tail tucked between my legs. But what I loved about looking back at that guy is the next day, I did the same thing. Mm-hmm. I was a sucker for pain because in order to be to be the best, you have to beat the best, even if the best continues to beat you. Because one day is only going to come if you continue to show up. Mm-hmm. So I just kept showing up. Um, and then one day I caught a pass on AD. Mm. And then one day I caught a pass on everybody else. And then the rest of the story continued. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, I guess in those moments, like, what are you saying to kind of like keep that great? Are you, are you being fueled because one, he's kind of being loud and kind of saying, you can't do this. I know for me and I, well, I kind of know I'm your a, personality. He was quiet. Okay. He was quietly powerful in that moment. He didn't have to say much. He didn't say much. Okay. Yeah. He just was like, all right, I, I handle you, little man. But, did, but didn't he say something about you going to be sitting next to the water cooler? Or that's, you just, that's what I internalized. Oh, so you were speaking for him inside yeah. of yourself. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what it felt like he said to okay. me. Okay. All right. Yeah. All a- right. AD was humble, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you, did, did you think, did you feel at any time a little embarrassed and you needed to kind of like redeem yourself that's what kind of kept you going or was or was it just you and him it didn't matter who else was on the field you were going to just keep going regardless both i definitely felt embarrassed because i know that because that's happened to me sometimes where it's just like man i he just punked me i gotta get up and do something else you know i can't let him get away with that but i feel like you got two options to make in that that situation is Mm -hmm. i can tuck my tail right now or I could step back up. Yeah. And I was always trying to step back up. I mean, that same mentality took me into college and even in the pros. Like, just because you won this one don't mean it's over. Yeah. Until they tell me I can't be out here anymore, we're going to keep, come on. Yeah. So that's that was my mentality. But at the same time, 
I was also like, I'm embarrassed. Mm -hmm. I gotta, I gotta show, I gotta show myself that I can. Yeah. I gotta show everybody else around me that I can. And I'm, and my mind was like, as long as it takes. So, what did you learn about AD's skill set? Like, did you notice anything? Like, oh, you know, because I know in basketball, um, when you're playing defense on somebody, you kind of notice what their tendencies, their tendencies are. are. You know, this person tends to go more left or he goes right or he does this similar crossover every single time. So were you able to pick up any, like, tendencies? Over time. Yeah. Okay. Over time I was. AD was very strong and very fast. But he was fast linearly. Mm -hmm. So if you got him running, like you're trying to run a go route, you're not going to run past AD. If you try to fight him at the line, he's too strong. Mm -hmm. So I learned to keep my space, but also make sure I run intermediate routes mm -hmm. so I can get his speed going and then make an adjustment, uh, cut it down. Something to stop on stop where I know I'm going to stop, and mm -hmm. he may continue to run a little further. Yeah. And this is the, this is the, um, the awareness that I was talking about. Yeah. You know, where you're – you might be in an adverse situation, but you are continuously trying to learn in this moment so that you can get an advantage later on. For sure. 